There's been incredible anticipation for the 2021 racing season. Canada's NASCAR competition begins today. 18 of the nation's top racers begin the journey to make their mark in the NASCAR Pinty Series Championship. The NASCAR Pinty Series is ready to race in 2021. Watch Canada's top motorsport talent duel it out on street courses, tough hard-nosed short tracks, and world-class road courses. Champions return looking to stack their racing resume, while a group of young new talent is ready to rock the NASCAR world. TSN is your home for the NASCAR Pinty Series. Welcome to the 2021 NASCAR Pinty Series on your home for NASCAR racing in Canada, TSN. We're at the third of a mile Sunset Speedway in Innisfil, Ontario. This is the Frontline Workers 125. Hello and welcome to the first of 11 stops on the 2021 schedule. I'm Dave Bradley. Along with me is my good friend Adam Ross. Todd Lewis and Kendra Adams will be patrolling the pits for us here today. But Adam, here we go. 11 stops on the 2021 schedule. We've got four on road and street circuits and seven on ovals this year. Dave, it's a COVID schedule. It's tight. All of the races this year keep the teams in Quebec and Ontario. We go back to two facilities we haven't visited since 2017. The Roval at ICAR, just north of Montreal. And we go to Delaware Speedway near London, Ontario. The new ownership group there has done an amazing job. That's where we're going to close out the 2021 season. Loads of team announcements in 2021 as well. Of course, Trayton Lapsovich will be chasing Rookie of the Year honors this year under the 22 racing umbrella but we've got a brand new team to the NASCAR Pinty Series as well, and one that makes its way north from North Carolina, and that's Rick Ware Racing. This is a really big deal. We're talking about a team owner that owns cup teams, IndyCar teams, IMSA teams, wants to grow a footprint here in Canada, and who better to do it with than a couple of Quebec talents, Andrew Ranger and Alex Gannett. And of course, we'll touch on the other team announcements over the course of this race, but our broadcast team has grown as well as we introduce you to Kendra Adams along pit lane. We say hello. Hi, Kendra. And it's great to be back here. And isn't it great to be back at the racetrack? These Sunset Speedway fans have been watching local stock car racing for the past month here at Sunset Speedway. And today they'll get to see the NASCAR Pinty's race. And I'm sure these fans will be cheering on local boys, Mark Dilley and Trayton Lapsovich. Track owner TJ Renamato is also behind the wheel of his number two Chevrolet. Let's send it down to Todd and see how today's field lines up. Thanks, Kendra. One of the drivers we'll see today is Raphael Lassard, substituting for Donald Teach, who injured his hand. He'll be alongside on pit road today. 18 cars to qualifying times earlier today. Starting on pole, it is the number seven APC Chevrolet of Pete Shepard, the third career pole in the NASCAR Pinty Series, posted a time of 14.8 seconds. Starting alongside on the front row, it's the number 20 of Trayton Lapsovich. Had two impressive showings last season here at Sunset Speedway. He'll go for the full rookie campaign and the full rookie series champion this season. When we return, we'll fire up the motors for the Frontline Workers 125. This NASCAR on TSN broadcast from Sunset Speedway is brought to you by Fast Eddie Speedwear, combustion culture collection available at fasteddiespeedwear.com. By E3 Spark Plugs, Born to Burn. By General Tire. And by Pinty's, making great food fun. A fantastic field of cars assembled, Dave. For years, we've talked about great talent in the series, even as the numbers got a little smaller. The numbers are starting to get bigger, and there's still more talent coming. This is going to get wild. Always exciting at the start of a new season. The drivers are strapped in. Now let's send it down trackside with Matt Jeffels from the South Simcoe Police. Drivers, start your engine. And the field comes to life, lined up along pit road here at Sunset Speedway. A final few knuckle bumps and the window nets going up for these drivers as they get their seatbelts started to pull tight because it's 125 laps, very much a dash. It's a superstition driven pre-race ritual that every driver has. But let's have a look at the E3 spark plug starting grid. On the pole is Pete Shepard the third in the seven alongside Trayton Lapsovich in the 20. 
LP Dumlin in the 47 with the 80, Rafael Lassard. Kevin Lacroix to the inside of row number three and Andrew Ranger in the 51 alongside him. Then you look back to row number four. That's where we find DJ Kennington, Alex Tagliani, a pair of veterans. Starting in ninth, it's Mark Antoine Cameron in the 22, Mark Dilly alongside in the 64. To row six, Larry Jackson in the 84. Shea Kemmel makes his series debut in the eight. Then we have Brett Taylor in the three this year. He'll start alongside the 52 of Alex Gannett. TJ Rinomato back behind the wheel of the number two. Dexter Stacy returns in the 92. They're row eight. Rounding out the field is Chantel Kalika in the 98 from Saskatchewan and Brent Weller making his series debut in the 61. A new look for a three-time series champion in Andrew Rangers. We'll take a look at your E3 Spark Plugs race analysis. 125 laps here at Sunset Speedway. Third mile oval, 18 degrees. Beautiful temperature for these drivers. And what a wild 360 degree view in Rangers car. Before we go green though, let's check in with Todd. As we salute first responders, let's talk about a couple of our own, like Larry Jackson, driver of the number 84. He's also a Mississauga fire captain and has spent much of his time over the last 18 months helping others. And another member of the Pinty Series family, Jason White. Jason was scheduled to be racing here today. Instead, he's at home in Sun Peaks, British Columbia, working on a fire response team, helping protect those who have been ravaged by the BC wildfires some great character. I, I usually say characters in the NASCAR Pinty Series, but there's a lot of great character as well. Fans in the stands looking to see those characters run. Matt Jeffels waves the green. It's been 673 days since fans have been able to see a NASCAR Pinty Series race live. Inside, We're green. Your corner, 47 inside. Pete Shepard on the pole with the inside groove, but Trayton Lapsovich, he's a youngster with a ton of experience here. He knows how to run the high side. You can see this is very much a two-groove racetrack, almost three grooves. Now we're side by side for the race lead, but look at that. The windshield of Pete Shepard's Chevy Camaro. You can see the rain starting to fall. And we've been getting reports of rain, but obviously from the in-car cameras, we can see the rain is indeed here. So far, no yellow. Wide, three wide. You notice no driver is talking to their spotter. They're busy trying to hang on to these race cars as the track gets a little bit wetter as the raindrops start to fall with increasing intensity. Side by side for the race lead. Trey Lapsovich goes to top spot just as the caution comes out. And that caution is indeed for the liquid sunshine we're seeing here at Sunset Speedway. Yeah, we ride on board the Quick Quick Chevrolet of Trayton Lapsovich, and again, you can see those raindrops. No windshield wipers. The cars will run them on road courses, but on the ovals, no windshield wipers. They cannot be run in the rain on the oval track. Ken Trader once said, we don't race on ovals in the rain because those concrete walls don't get any softer in the rain. And it's a lot easier to spin out, obviously. With road courses, you have runoff areas, you have gravel traps that'll slow the cars down. Here, you just have a concrete barrier. So the field circulates behind the pace truck. Pete Shepard, our race leader, Trayton Lapsovich second, Andrew Ranger in third. LP Dumlin was in the, a spirited battle there with Alex Tagliani, who runs fifth, and Andrew Ranger in third in the early laps of this one. Yeah, what NASCAR is doing right now, keeping the cars on track because there is some heat coming from the underside of these cars, some heat coming from the tires as well. They'll try and maintain at least a dry line for as long as they can hoping it's just a passing shower. You could see Trayton right there looking out the left side of the car because it's much easier to see than if he looks straight ahead till you get to the corner. You'll look out the opening of the driver's window because you have some visibility. Yeah, so fingers crossed this passes quickly and we'll be able to get back racing uh, very, very shortly. But now you see the field slowing up. It looks as though the rain is getting heavier as the umbrellas are out in the grandstand. We're about to go red here at Sunset Speedway and wait out Mother Nature. Good number of fans here. They'll look for some cover, maybe grab a snack as we'll attempt to dry the track as quickly as possible and get back to racing here in the Frontline Workers 125 on TSN. 
Welcome back to the first installment of the 2021 NASCAR Pinty Series. We're at Sunset Speedway for the Frontline Workers 125 and through the magic of NASCAR horsepower and a jet dryer, NASCAR has managed to secure a dry line. We're almost set to return to racing once again. Yeah, they've let the cars accelerate a little bit. I mean, this is quicker than a caution speed, not quite racing speed. You mentioned it a few minutes ago, Dave, that these cars generate a ton of heat. Yeah, they do. So they'll keep trying to put that heat in the track, and we'll check in one more time with our Kendra Adams, who's standing by. Kendra? A familiar face here in the Pinty Series garage is that of Canadian Motorsports Hall of Famer Jim Bray. Tonight, he's fielding the number 98 car of Chantelle Kalika at her first start here at Sunset Speedway. If you look to the side of that number 98, you will see a sticker for Jim's granddaughter, Alana, who is currently over at the Tokyo 2020 Olympics for kayaking. What a great story. And that now Jim Bray bringing the car to the track, of course, Mike Kerb, the car owner, and a new deal with Kerb Records. That's also exciting for them. And that car will run a full season with drivers Kalika and Sam Fellows behind the wheel. So exciting to see another car and exciting to get back to racing here. We're nine laps in of a scheduled 125. And after a delay, the green flag waves once again. And that battle at the front picks back up. Nobody really knows what their car will do here. This is a completely green racetrack. And I dare say a little bit damp racetrack as these drivers get back up to speed. Trayton Lapsovich with a great aggressive move to take the lead. Now you can see that inside line is pretty dry. You don't really want to venture too far outside of that area because it'll be a little bit slick, but the drivers don't seem to care. They're at it right away. Yeah, you have to go, Dave. 125 laps in this series is basically a sprint race. You can't hold back too much because this race is not long enough to get through that entire field. You heard Todd talk off the top of the show about 17-year-old Trayton Lapsovich chasing Rookie of the Year honors. Your race leader, you see the yellow stripe on the back end of that Chevrolet Camaro with support from Quickwick and RGC. And Trayton Lapsovich, no stranger to this racetrack. As a matter of fact, he was the youngest champion here at Sunset Speedway at just 11 years old back in 2015. We ride on board with Pete Shepard, who was 13 years old when he jumped into a stock car. And at the time, it was unheard of. And then, as you say, Trayton being 11 years old. Great field of side-by-side -side racing. There you see the O'Neill Electric, number 84 of Larry Jackson, riding alongside another new face in the 61. Yeah, Brent Weller, a longtime racer in Southern Ontario, first time with the series. That's a former Noel Dowler car, and they've got a great bunch of people working with him. Yeah, he said he's sort of race to race. He would like to do more. It all depends on how well this first race goes, and so far doing all right. He's sitting in 15th spot. We ride with Brett Taylor, driver from Calgary, Alberta, running the three machine this year, Fast Eddie Speedwear. And there's a side-by-side -side battle. Alice Gannett in the 52, Dexter Stacy in the 92. A couple names we've seen in the NASCAR Pinty Series in the past. Alex Gannett making his return after running several years in a late model in Quebec. And of course, Dexter Stacy ran the shortened season last year under COVID-19 protocol. That shortened season won by Jason Hathaway, crowned the champion. Brings a lot of positive energy to the series. Dexter Stacey's always in a good mood. Great to see him running the full season here. Look at this battle. Top five knows the tail. You, you know, if we want to stretch the truth a little bit, you could even say the top eight is there's three closing in from behind. Yeah, it's not going to take long for them to gather that space up. And there's the 80 of Rafael Lassard even looking up to the outside. Remember, he has two starts in the NASCAR Pinty series and already has a win under his belt. Yeah, one down at Autodrome Chaudière, racing for the Dumoulin team. An impressive drive that day. Shepard taking a look once again underneath the 20. Oh, uh, and we've got side-by-side -side battle now, Lacroix and Lassard, and the 47 of Dumoulin just ahead. So it looks like Lacroix trying, trying to get underneath the 47 WeatherTech Dodge of L.P. Dumoulin, there he goes, but Lassard is on the back bumper of the Dumoulin 47, giving him a push. Lassard very much forced the hand there of Kevin Lacroix. And I have to stop when we get to listen to in-car cameras. I just love hearing the throttle control. 
Raphael Lazard had worked to the outside of Lacroix. Lacroix's only choice was to try to pass LP Dumoulin at that point. Now Lazard will follow him through, and Dumoulin is headed backwards. A couple EHR cars joining this paddle as well. The eight of Shea Gimmel and the three of Brett Taylor. New look to that team. Of course, that one campaigned by Jason Hathaway for many years. Now Brett Taylor takes the reins of the familiar number three after jumping out of the 33 campaign last year. We rode on board there briefly with Brett Taylor. We're back to the front now as Trayton Lapsovich taking a little bit wider arc into the corner. So Pete Shepard keeping that APC number seven low to the racetrack right along the rumble strips where Trayton Lapsovich a little bit wider arc in theory, a little easier on the tires that way. Have a look at that purple car though. That one is Andrew Ranger. If you're just joining us, Ranger joining a new team this year with Rick Ware racing and a new number as well, losing the familiar number 27. Trying the top side on the 18 out back. That was his spotter, Joe Chisholm Jr. Alex Tagliani, that driver in the 18 he was talking about, Tagliani put the biggest whooping the NASCAR Pinty Series has ever seen right here at Sunset Speedway years ago when he just about lapped the whole darn field. Yeah, and then he came back the next year and won it again, but a battle for the lead. Shepard using the bumper just a little bit to nudge the 20 loose and open that door. And now it's filled by the APC number seven of Pete Shepard. We will likely see this all night long. It's not terribly difficult to get a nose beneath someone ahead of you. It's very challenging to clear that car. Pete Shepard just did so. A great move to take over the lead. Ranger going to follow through that same hole opened up by Pete Shepard. Looks like Lapsovich in jeopardy of being great trained here. Unless he can get in, and he does tuck in behind the 51 of Andrew Ranger. Just ahead of Alex Tagliani. Of course, that's a Dave Jacobs prepared team, the seven of Pete Shepard. Great to see him back and competitive in the series. Yeah, last raced in 2019. Five wins in all in the NASCAR Pinty Series for Pete Shepard, so he's no stranger to a checkered flag. Rafael Lassard carrying a bit more momentum. That's why he shot to the outside of Kennington as we see Brent Weller in the 61 get all sorts of loose there on a turn number four. He's right behind the O'Neill Electric 84, Larry Jackson. He's in some good company there, but the leaders are coming. They'll have to pick up the pace. Chantal Kalika in the 98 is there as well. It's a battle for fourth spot now. As DJ Kennington holds the inside, Rafael Lassard has managed to make that outside group work in the WMI number 80. Again, a substitute driver for Donald Teach and doing very, very well up on the outside. I know Donald Teach is a passionate racer. We, we've seen him climb out of the car after victory, after Check defeat. Whoa, well, problems. No, we got one around. Keep digging. Keep digging. Keep digging. The yellow is out as the two car of TJ Renamato goes around. And I wonder if, if he is as passionate a spectator watching his 80 car on the racetrack with Rafael Lazard behind the wheel. Let's have a look at the left of your screen. And yeah, Rina Mato just sailed it in a little too deep in the corner, right in front of Pete Shepard. He wanted to stay on the lead lap, couldn't hold on to the back end of that race car. Obviously feeling the pressure from the leaders coming up from behind. Pit stop time, and one of the cars coming down pit lane is the 92 of Dexter Stacy. And you'll notice the paint scheme. He has every child matters on the hood of that 92 machine, raising awareness. And of course, Dexter Stacy, an indigenous person from Kahnawake, Quebec. Who better to present that message? But what's really cool, Dave, is that all of the teams in the NASCAR Vinci Series running that decal such an important cause it is very much an important cause and it's one that'll be circulated now around quebec in ontario as the series makes a number of stops here in 2021 we'll take a quick break pete shepherd your leader in the seven welcome back to the thrill on the hill in innisville as it was once known in sunset speedway and we've got a dandy of a race on our hands as the nascar pinty series gets back underway here in the front line, workers 125 under caution for a single car spin. Pete Shepard, now Andrew Ranger. Your front rows, we get sent to go back to green. Look at how high Shepard brings him through three and four and then jumps on the gas and look at the start he gets. 
there's a lot of little things you can do as a race car driver on restarts, but when there's moisture up on the outside, when there's rubber down in the groove on the inside, it magnifies your, your choices. And Pete Shepard, he put one on Andrew Ranger there, got himself a heck of a restart. It's not too often that Andrew Ranger doesn't like the outside. And LP Dumoulin, you've got the 22 Paye Chevrolet of Mark Antoine Cameron and the 52 of Alex Gannett. They're all covered by a blanket. I've been enjoying Shake Gamble, watching him in local late model racing. So he's a great oval track racer. These racetracks are familiar to him. It's, it's fun watching him out there battle with drivers. He's never turned laps with. And interesting too, Shea Gemmel has defending series champion Jason Hathaway as his crew chief here today. So he has a lot of veteran guidance in his pit and he's putting it to good use, sitting well inside the top 10 right now in that spot. We ride on board with Kevin Lacroix. Tinted visor up on the 74 of Lacroix as the sun has gone down here at Sunset Speedway. Well, it has been an interesting night. Of course, we had that rain delay early, so we were supposed to get the green flag a little bit earlier. We did. We only ran for a few laps, and then the rains came, and now it's a much different story. So some of the drivers still have their tint on their visors, and that's creating a bit of an issue now. Not so much because of the windshield. Tell you, a driver looking pretty sporty is DJ Kennington from St. Thomas in that Castrol Edge 17. Because we've got some bumping and grinding there. Mark Antoine Cameron welcoming Shea Gemmel to the series with the front bumper of the GM Pie number 22. I've been watching this battle for a little while, and the 22 of Cameron has been wanting to go for quite some time. So he decided to take matters into his own hand and get up. And now a little payback from the aid of Shea Gemmel into the back bumper of the Chevrolet of Cameron. Chantel Kalika just squeaking by as Cameron gets that car right in. I don't think Cameron wanted to wait too long. He wants to get back going, obviously not wanting to go a lap down, but I think he wants to have some words with the driver of the eight. Beautiful shot from our drone there. Shea Gemmel and Mark Antoine Cameron making some contact, sending Cameron around in turn one. He stayed on the lead lap, but we've got pit stop. First one to make a stop will be the 64 of Mark Dilley. New look for Mark Dilley this year. NTN bearings, Leland Industries still on the quarter panels and on the hood, but a new team. He's now under the leadership of Dave White. Yeah, Dave White building chassis, doing a great job. We look at Dexter Stacy back on pit road for the second time. They've made a couple of big swings at the setup on that chassis. It's obviously not to the liking of Dexter. Now at this point, if you don't have the track position you were looking for, you might as well come make a stop, make those changes, and try and work your way back up through the field because as hard as these drivers have been racing, and you Trouble. see the 17, or 17, DJ Kennington off the pace down the back straightaway. Just pulls up lane to the outside of the racetrack. I don't think he can make it to pit road from there at that speed. And indeed, they've called off this restart. Yeah, you see the yellow flag waving from the flag stand. And there he is, DJ Kennington in the Castro Ledge Dodge, limping to pit lane. Carburetor something. Got to check fuel line. Carburetor. Fuel pump. Of all the drivers in the series, DJ Kennington he diagnoses from inside the car. That was DJ we were listening to, and he's calling for help because the car won't make it down pit lane without any power. And he's one of the last of the old school racers. He builds, he works on, and he maintains these race cars, and he knows them like the back of his hand. So. And he keeps himself so very calm. His demeanor is fantastic. Todd Lewis is on the spot. They're not sure what exactly the problem is, but their fuel is not getting to the motor. They don't know if it's a fuel line. They're not sure if it's a carburetor. That's what the 17 team is trying to diagnose right now. What we know is this will take times and caution laps do count. So DJ Kennington will be going laps down as they try to diagnose this problem and then try to make the necessary repairs. And, and they're not seeing what they want to find, obviously. Like sometimes you'll see something that's blatant. Oh yeah, quick fix. Other times it leaves them scratching their heads a little bit. Again, DJ will guide them through this process from inside the car, but his crew is quite capable as well. Well, under caution, we should give a shout out to a couple of NASCAR fans, huge fans, 
Cam K and Graydon Bunn, they're in the grandstands here today. They run a podcast called Stickers and Scuffs, very popular through the COVID pandemic. They're just happy to be back at the racetrack. Their passion is phenomenal. Great to see them. Today is the first day they've met in person. They've done all this great work on their podcast they had never physically met before. back out into the lead. This one a little bit more contested than the last restart for Andrew Ranger, but he slots into second in the 51, but he's got company coming up behind. The 80 of Rafael Lasard again up in that outside group. You know, I don't know if he prefers it up there, but he definitely looks comfortable up there. If he's on the inside, he's making passes, but if he's on the outside, he's making passes. <laughs> like, it's a good place to be. On board, 17-year-old Trayton Lapsovich in the Quickwick Chevrolet. Frank Wall from Quickwick on hand here today. Big smile on his face, loving seeing his race cars out on the track. Tell you, David Driver, without a big smile on his face is with Todd right now. Guys, they have been working on this car since he pulled off during the caution. They're underneath trying to diagnose whether it was a fuel line or a carburetor problem. You can see a little bit of fuel leaking out from underneath. DJ's trying to get that car fired. Looks like they've got it reconnected, and they've got a fire back in that 17 once again. That'll be music to the ears of DJK Racing. DJ Kennington, one of the favorites in the championship here in 2021 after picking up a win in the 2020 season. DJ Kennington, I mean, what can you say? He's he's driven in every race across the country in Canada's National Stock Car Series since 1998. Yeah, they used to call him the Castro Kid. He's no kid anymore, 44 years young. Castro Kid's kid is starting to race now and <laughs> doing true. fairly well. Right on board the bumper-to-bumper -bumper Lacroix tuning number 74 of Kevin Lacroix. And problems, the 92 Dexter Stacy hard up into the wall in turn number one. He pounded the concrete on the front straightaway. I'm surprised he's able to drive away as hard as he hit that wall. We get a chance to have another look. And there you can see he makes contact with another car just at the entrance to turn number one. Unfortunately for Dexter, the car went the wrong way. And now he has to limp back to pit lane. Heavy damage to the right side. Significant right front damage. The suspension, that's not just a flat tire. That's a lot of suspension damage. Yeah, so the number 92 team will go to work trying to make the repairs because he is running a full season. So hopefully he'll be able to get back out, salvage as many points as he can. But we should mention the 17 of DJ Kennington is now in the infield. He did have fire under the hood. He ran for a little while not a long time so now the castrol team has to go to work to try and make repairs under caution we'll return for more from sunset speedway welcome back to race number one of 11 in the 2021 series the nascar pt series from sunset speedway the seven white and blue chevrolet of pete shepherd your race leader as we get sent to go back to green he has the purple Number 51 of Andrew Ranger up on the outside. The green flag waves. We're back in the way. Tighter restart this time through one and two. The field stays mostly in formation, but Pete Shepard again gets out in front of that APC number seven. They do battle side by side. Trayton Lapsovich trying to draw himself back into the top two. It takes a long time for this field to separate into a single file. They seem quite happy running side by side as you see Trayton Lapsovich rubbing doors with the 51 of Andrew Ranger for second spot. Still Lassard really able to send it into the corners. They don't get single file that quickly here because it's such a wide racetrack. It's comfor comfortable to run down low, to run up high. There's a lot of options for these drivers. And what you don't see, you might see from our drone shot a little bit later on, is that it's actually a D-shape. So down the back straightaway, you're always arcing the wheel, and you can drive it into three a lot deeper than you can to turn number one. So now we see the top three single file, and again, they're, they're fanned out double wide with Kevin Lacroix working the inside of Raphael Lassard. As many cars as Lassard has passed today, 
he has to have lost a lot of spots because we keep seeing him have to claw his way back up towards second and third spots. I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm a little bit surprised to see the 74 of Kevin Lacroix sort of hanging back outside the top five, just inside the top five. He was quickest in practice earlier on this afternoon and was a threat to take pole. Unfortunately, didn't get the qualifying lap he was looking for and sort of has been in a struggle ever since. I'll tell you what we've got this year. I mean, Dave Jacobs out in front, Scott Stackley, Rick Ware racing all in a row, and we're under caution, so I'm gonna tell you later. <laughs> that was a very good tease, well done. Caution flag flies, debris the reason on the racetrack and there you see it a large piece of debris it's the rear bumper cover from the 22 high a chevrolet of mark antoine cameron is it still the 22 or would it now just be the two it's sort of two and a half at this point but you see mark antoine cameron one of the drivers running the numbers on the rear quarter panel which nascar allows here in 2021 have another look what happened on board with mark dilly just ahead so Cameron locked up the brake shot up the track and on his way back down found Mark Dilly and Mark Dilly decided to make that car just a little bit lighter so that was an attempt to get back to the inside Cameron not wanting to get stuck up in that outside groove there's Randy Steckley watching on that's Cameron's crew chief in Dr the 22 drawn Don't out of retirement again <laughs> yet again <laughs> Always good to see Randy Steckley at the track, Scott Steckley. That, that team has remained intact for, for decades in Ontario. Yeah, and always competitive, too. That is something that we need to underline as well. But we talked about a lot of the people who are here today, representatives from WeatherTech. We've got Tony Spiteri from Pinty's in attendance here today. And, of course, we have to take our hats off to Brian and Sandra Toddish, uh, providing a wonderful facility for the NASCAR Pinty Series here today. O'Neill Electric, RGC Sports, just tons of hospitality guests here today. It's the first race of 2021. We're back underway and a bump and a spin now for the 20. Trayton Lapsovich goes around in front of the field. Couple cars collected. Not too badly, though. It looks like Alex get in the 52, able to still roll. I want to get another look at that. It looked like Andrew Ranger's brakes might have failed. Something happened where he checked up because there was definitely a bump from behind on the seven of Pete Shepard, right. and then it sort of careened up into the 20. Have another look. So Shepard and Lapsovich on the front row. Yeah, I, I think Ranger lightened up Shepard in the seven. Shepard got in faster than he wanted to to the corner. Let's watch this view. This is a good one. Yeah, so it didn't take much to send Lapsovich around. It's a little deeper in the field. It's just so tight. Oh, and a big hit as Dilly tried to make his way through and actually plowed through the back of the 52 of Alex Gannett. Just nowhere to go once cars start scrambling. Trayton Lapsovich accelerating here through the field. Not sh quite sure where he's going because in NASCAR rule, you, you fall in line wherever you blend in line. And it looks like Lapsovich is going to try and blend back in, but it will likely be sent to the rear. Of course, Lapsovich running in the APC late model series for the most part here in 2021, last year as well. You look around in this field, you've got Pete Shepard, second in points in the APC series. Shea Gemmel, a veteran of that series, as we mentioned earlier. It's a stout series in Ontario that's providing great drivers. And there's been plenty of crossover, like J.R. Fitzpatrick, Matt Pritico, lots of drivers have, have done both series. You're watching the Frontline Workers 125 on TSA. There are a lot of things in this world that are fake. Food shouldn't be one of them. Pinty's Man Cave Rib Tips. Authentic food for real people. Crave the cave, friends. Pinty's Man Cave. We're about an hour north of Toronto at Sunset Speedway. The NASCAR Pinty Series and the Frontline Workers 125 continue under caution. I'm Dave Bradley. Along with me is Adam Ross in the booth, Todd Lewis and Kendra Adams. Pit side, and there's Alex Gannett. You can see the back damage to the Rick Ware Racing number 52. So, Dave, do you want any more reason to win opening night in the NASCAR Penny Series? How's this? The race one winner went on to win that year's points championship four times in the history of the series, as we could see there. It's not just a win. 
it's the win for those four drivers. Well, it sets up your momentum for the rest of the season, and especially this year with such a short season because of COVID-19. And really hats off to Sherry and everybody at NASCAR for reorganizing the schedule so many times in order for us to get races at all here in 2021. Yeah, the NASCAR team has done a great job. They were in fine form today, working through a rain delay, in fact. And here we are. Ranger up on the outside, looking very sporty in the 51. We saw the one Rick Ware racing entry in the pits for Alex Canetti has rejoined at the tail, but Andrew Ranger up high. All of you guys are up back here. You gotta fight him off. Ranger loves that outside groove almost yeah. everywhere he goes. Might have been a little rub there from the APC number seven of Pete Shepard. And now Ranger will fall back into a battle with the 80 of Rafael Lazard, who uses the inside lane to move up a spot underneath the 74. He's done it ball. all night long, wherever the opportunity is, inside or outside. Right now he's hitching his wagon to the inside train. Yeah, so who is this guy? Raphael Lassard, we've talked to so or talked about so many times this race. He's from Saint Joseph de Beauce in Quebec. 20 years old, started this year in the truck series, running for GMS Racing. Now running in late models. So we have a caution spin, and it is Alex Gannett up in turn number four. He goes around, so that'll slow the field. But uh, Raphael Lassard is no stranger to going fast, and no stranger to NASCAR either. Talented young race car driver, so is Atlas Gannett, who had some trouble there. Looks like TJ Renamato in the two machine was involved in that mishap as well. We're getting down to the final stage, it's lap 100. Let's look at the replay. It'll be Mark Dilley and Alice Gannett getting together, and TJ Renamato was the last of the party and squared up Gannett right in the passenger door. Might have lost him in the smoke as we ride on board. This is with Mark Dilley. fairly quickly but he got into him hard enough that it sent the 52 around you know what helps a driver get off someone real quickly when they're spinning is if you know they're about to spin because you hit them that hard <laughs> you can see the damage to the body work the crew is trying to secure that push that hood down and then use a lot of tape and bear bonds so that tj renomato can see also check to make sure there's no suspension damage underneath the good thing about Sunset Speedway, you don't necessarily need aerodynamics, so it's all a matter of keeping those body panels on the two car of TJ Renamon. Yeah, and we brag about that so much with this series. You don't get aero pushes and aero loose. The fiberglass bodies are conducive to hard physical racing, and that's what you get here in the NASCAR Pinty Series. We're about to go back to green flag racing, less than 25 laps to go, Dave. Lights off on the pace truck as it'll head towards pit lane. You see the drivers trying to get a little bit more heat in their general tires before they jump on the gas off at turn number four, and that's what'll happen in a second as the green flag is back up once again. Side by side, door to door down into turn number one. Ranger with a great jump on the outside, but Pete Shepard fighting back on the bottom. Side by side, three rows deep in through the first lap, back under green. Ranger up on the outside, Shepard down low. Outside, he's coming back at the bumper. There's Raphael Lassard, Kevin Lacroix. Those two have been around each other nearly all of the more than 100 laps we've run so far. Oh, and Raphael Lassard to the inside of Pete Shepard. Aggressive move to the bottom. Took advantage of some contact there. Lassard goes to the top. That's MP Roy, his spotter on the radio. A little bit of cheerleading as Lassard goes to top spot for the first time today. Looking at Alex Tagliani and Kevin Lacroix side by side battling for third, they've been mostly quiet this race, but there is barely a mark on either of those cars. They've got lots of equipment left to do battle with, and Tagliani has decided to cash in one of those chips right now. <laughs> There's definitely marks there now. He made some contact with the APC number seven of Pete Shepard to make some room on the inside, but remember how dominant Alex Tagliani was here at Sunset Speedway. 2015 a winner, 2016 a winner. He's looking to get back to victory lane here. Pete Shepard has been first or second this entire race. He is sliding back through the top five. Tagliani with a great run to the inside. Then it's Shea Kemmel in the eight. He's going to fill that hole as well. And remember, that seven car will be running on the road courses over the course of this 21 season, except with Kyle Marcelli, a Barry native, from not far away here in uh, Sunset oh. Speedway. Now it's up into the wall. 
Shepard in the seven almost touches the wall. He manages to get it stopped. We're under caution with 14 to go. It's unnatural to spin to the right. Like, I, I really want to say, I watched it happen and I need to see it again to understand the physics behind this. There is an explanation and here it is. So you see Shepard jumping way up to the outside to go three wide. A little bit of contact with Kevin Lacroix at the same time as Shepard getting contact with Tagliani. This should show it perfectly. Bump from behind yeah. and Tagliani getting out of shape at the same time and Shepard spins out to the right. There are not many racetracks in Canada where you could spin out to the right going into turn three and not destroy your car. Absolutely right. So Shepard lives to fight another day. He'll join the tail of the field. Little bit of a cleanup for some of the fiberglass that is laying out around the track. There is Dave White, car owner of the 80 and several others in the field, but crew chief on the 80 as well. Chassis designer, this chassis is, builder. This is his baby. And or orchestrator of White Motorsports. We really do. It's an exciting time to be a stock car fan in Canada because you've got White Motorsports. You've got McCall Racing Enterprises who prepared Pete Shepard's car, among many others. It's great to have that kind of rivalry. And also the 47 of LP Dumoulin, they've decided to go out on their own and design their own chassis as well. The Quick Quick hottest lap belongs to the 51 of Andrew Ranger, 14.984. That's the quickest time so far this race. Sub 15 seconds, you're doing something right. I don't think anyone's going to go faster than that at this point. These general tires are well used. Now it's a matter of who's got the best setup on hot, used up tires. Five to go when they cross the line and they'll do that right now with the green flag waving once again. Andrew Ranger immediately to the bottom of the racetrack. He's going to cross over Lazard if he can get a run off the turn and he cannot. That's what he tried to do. He got into the back of the 80 just a little bit but also took a bump from the 18 of Alex Tagliani on board the WeatherTech number 47 of LP Dumoulin. Kevin Lacroix on the back bumper of Alex Tagliani. He's got Shea Gemmel alongside him battling it out. Gemmel going to drift back in line behind Lacroix. It's Lazard by two car lengths. Zero pressure at the front, into the wall, the three, fast Eddie Speedware. Chevrolet of Brett Taylor rubs the front stretch wall, he gathers it up and we stay green. That was something. Now Mark Antoine Cameron battling with Trayton Lapsovich off the turn four. Brett Taylor all jacked up behind him. Couple drivers who have had spins, three drivers as a matter of fact, who have had spins at some point during this race. We will see the white flag, this time by the flag stand. Raphael Lassard will lead them there. Look at that. He has about a two-car length gap back to the 51 of Andrew Ranger. Ranger's got to work a miracle to close in turn three. He's not going to do it, Dave. Winner of race number one in 2021 is the 80 White Motorsports Industries Chevrolet of Raphael Lassard. Donald Teach with a huge smile on his face. He's going to run out to the pit wall to congratulate the Philly driver, Raphael Lasard. He did an admirable job today. Can't do much better than that, Dave. I mean, passes on the inside, passes on the outside. He looked comfortable everywhere on this racetrack. And look at that car. Barely a mark on it. Few tire scuffs up the door, but in great shape. Here after 125 laps at Sunset Speedway, Raphael Assart going old school. He's going to do a Polish victory lap. Backwards on the racetrack, driver's window exposed to the fans so he can salute the great race fans here. Fireworks there between Shea Gemmel and the 22 of Mark Antoine Cameron as they exchange waves here on the front straightaway. A little bit of congratulations as we'll be back to congratulate your race winner. What a way to welcome fans back to NASCAR Pinty Series racing here in 2021. And what a finish, Todd. Helmets off, unbuckled, and climbing out with a checkered flag in hand. Once again, Rafael Assard is victorious in the NASCAR Pinty Series. That makes two out of three. First victory for White Motorsports. Rafael, what a move to get you to the front on that restart. Take me through that. Yeah, I was talking with my crew chief the first few, the lap under caution. And I was like, man, I, we need to capitalize on the first few laps after a restart because that's where we're the best. And I think that's what we did. But we got three wide. It was tight for a second. But I just can't thanks everyone at White Motorsport 
uh, Tej Chevrolet. He gave me a great opportunity, and I'm just uh, really glad I brought the 80 in victory lane. Congratulations to Rafael Assard, winner here at Sunset Speedway. Good job, bud. Congratulations from Mark Patrick Waugh, Tony Spiteri from Pinty's. Big smiles all around. Look at the grin on his face. And there is Donald Teed. You see the cast still on his hand. Well, that's not slowing him down here in victory lane. What a run for the youngster from Quebec, Raphael Lassard, picking up his first win. Let's take a look at the final results here. And Shea Gemmel coming home with a top five. LP Dumoulin chasing him in sixth. It's like a parfait of chassis, Chevrolet and Dodge through the top 10. 11th through 18th, these are drivers who would have liked to have done a bit better. Pete Shepard, one of them, had a great start to the day. Things didn't turn out in the end. Now let's head down to your second place finisher. Awesome. So after a great run here, your best finish here at Sunset. Yeah. And after being here in a really long time, how does it feel to come on pretty late in the race and have a really good finish here? I'm very happy, seriously. It's been a tough race with, uh, with uh, Pete and a uh, nice fight with Raphael. Uh, my car, the 51 car, was pretty fast. We need to make some adjustments, but for the second race, well, I'm very proud of my team. They did a great job, and uh, a second place for us tonight is very good. Andrew Angel will be happy with that. Champion in 2019, looking to get back to the top of the championship standings, although a little bit of a deficit now, just four points back. Rafael Lassard obviously leading the points with 47. We have a look, your top 10 in points, basically your top 10 finishers here tonight. So the celebrations continue in victory lane. That grin on Rafael Lassard's face is not going away for a long time. Two wins and three starts in the series. That's reason to grin. The Frontline Workers 125 has been brought to you by Quickwick, the world's number one fire starters. By WeatherCheck, the ultimate interior protection for your vehicle. By Leland Industries, a proud Canadian fastener company. And by Sunbelt, when you're ready to tackle that large job or weekend project, turn to sunbeltrentals.com for all your equipment needs. Tony Spiteri helping Raphael get pumped up for his victory. At the beginning of the afternoon, you could feel the anticipation in the pits. The drivers eager to get back at it here at Sunset Speedway. And once they hit the track, they did not disappoint. These drivers are pros. These crews are pros. But if you don't think they notice fans in the grandstands and the electricity in the venue, you'd be mistaken. What a show they put on for 125 laps. The next race, the General Tire 125 again from Sunset Speedway. From all of us here at Fuel Media Lab, we'll see you then. This copyrighted telecast may not be reproduced, retransmitted, or used in any form without the authorized written consent of NASCAR Broadcasting. NASCAR would like to thank all of our fans for your support, and we hope you enjoy today's broadcast.